All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Miss uh, C Kappa Season Four. We have some more action here. Game number two of Five Team Bazaar versus Clutch Gamers. Definitely a heated matchup here. Some of the top dogs in SEA. Um, Android being joined once again by Die Trent. What's up, boy? Hello, hello. Hi. We're uh we're back. We had a little bit of a, a delay thing, but don't worry, you guys didn't miss anything. Anyway, the uh, the teams weren't quite ready. They were just getting their things all gathered, and they they got into the game, and uh, well, here we are. So that's a lone druid. Uh, I have not personally Radiant seen too much of this hero since the latest nerfs. Uh, haven't seen him really being prioritized in terms of the picks and bans. So uh, I'm looking forward to see what clutch gamers can get done with him. See if the hero's uh, still a okay. And uh, once again, we're going to have a first phase OD come out here from Team Bazaar. And I can't really blame them because it worked <laughs> out pretty well last game. It really did, man. I think uh, Team Bazaar, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I like the choice of going for the Nyx Assassin here instead of perhaps the Legion Commander. I think that was a super smart choice as Legion just got uh, no, no damage last game. She ended the game with... Uh, sub 100 damage after 65 66 minutes so uh definitely changing her out there and clutch i mean they're responding by taking the lone druid which can go later i don't think they want to fall into that same trap of the draft that's really strong from 20 to 30 minutes and that has very little scaling power after that yeah this still uh lets them come online early too so if they want to go for a, a faster push i mean we've seen uh i know tnc before the uh I guess back when we were casting more of like Mr. Cat and stuff, they were running uh, uh, Drow Radiant with the Lone Druid too. And they would do like these early roast strats and stuff like that, which was pretty cool, like a fast Deso um, Lone Druid. But then you can also just do your, your ogres and whatnot um, into the uh, the more of like the mid game, late game kind of a focus. And uh, we have lost our ogre. Um, the next pick, as you said, very smart Ten this game. Seconds. Just make sure your opponents can't get it. I'm sure CG would have loved to have taken it up against the OD. And uh, not only does that provide you with a, a decent offlaner, still very meta, could be potentially a support, but uh, it negates some picks from Clutch Gamers too. Uh, don't really want to go into like your uh, maybe your Darkseers or your Invokers being one of the other big ones. So good hero to start your draft with. All right, ban on the faceless void. Don't see too much of that these days. Is that? I think he got banned last game too, and it was kind of funny. Did he? Uh, if I'm not crazy, yeah, second phase. But you're right. Um, definitely Radiant a little bit odd. Pick. Um, I, last game I thought it made sense because they had the OD and they had the ogre, and ogre is just like a you know top notch hero, a okay with uh making bloodlust. Uh, it, it brings void to the position one. Totally fine. But uh, this will be the probably Ten Ben Sankings. So this should be a support Nyx, I would guess. And uh, basically just brings that into Five the fold of having been remaining. a deny pick to make sure that their OD wouldn't get countered. All right. I, uh, I like the bug strat going on. We still got Broodmother in the pool of Team Bazaar. Want to really carry that out? Oh, yeah. No, good. Good stuff. I like it. Weaver also available if they were uh, really riding that train. But <laughs> Classic anti-lone druid hero. There you go. <laughs> No, I mean, I think just in general, Team Bazaar are playing this. I, I really like their draft. I think it's going to be very sneaky. I think they've got good initiation. I think they've got good gank. I think they've got good, you know, just team fight damage. And Clutch, we still got three picks left from them. But based on how Bazaar Admiral played Kunkha. last game, it's going to be pretty difficult uh, to kind of play huh. around with them. And Kunkka picked up here. I do like this. I think I've seen Kunkka and Rubik as a roaming duo once, and it worked out pretty well. Kanka, Kanka, Kanka. So a little bit of a resurgence lately. Been seeing some teams pick remaining. up the old uh, Admiral here, but there wasn't Earth Spirit left in the pool, Five for example. Uh, one of the more classic guys. But uh, better a... team fight potential overall with the Kanka just from the boat Radiant and then controlling pick. from the X and the Torrent. But still a little unusual. Maybe they have something planned, uh, like a Juggernaut or a Tinker or something like that, where they're really going to abuse the X mark. Well, I guess even Lone Druid actually can kind of fall Ten into that a little bit. Like, you can be sieging uh, and it'll be a little bit safer just by having the spin. Five or rather be the, the recall on the X, kind of like the way you do it with Juggernaut, where he just gets X, he walks to the tower, he spins and damages the tower and just time. gets pulled way back. So, we'll see. Um, I kind of like Jug here. I could see that being an okay decision for them. Eh, it's boring. I want something feisty. Yeah, it would also force mid lane uh, Lone Druid for Armel, and I'm not sure if that's really his style. 
Um, I... We've seen good success from him on the Shadow Fiend and the Ember Spirits uh, overall, but don't want to go Ember into the OD. Uh, definitely not into the Nyx, even if it's support either. So uh, I could still see a Shadow Fiend, though, just being Radiant side. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a possibility. I think... Uh... I mean, is there a possibility we go super old school and get, like, a Shadow Demon Luna as our last two? Because Kunkka Shadow Demon is a awesome combo. Uh, if we if they play mid-Rubik, but I don't think we've seen that too much lately, sadly. Oh, Mid-LD. Mid I think Armel does... Oh, then where's Rubik going to go? Back. Support. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Didn't think that went all the way through, Trent. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, so they take the axe. They don't opt for the sniper. Uh, that was the other big one left. In terms of countering out the OD in the mid lane. So uh, I guess we assume Team Bazaar are going to ban it. Maybe they're comfortable going up against the Sniper once more. Who knows? Seems they are. They don't want Kunkka Tinker shenanigans. Bold. All right. Our Mel shows he's clearly capable in the in the tiny little hands of the Sniper. But we'll see. I mean, I can agree. Kunkka Tinker is the most obnoxious shit ever. Like, what's worse? Than I mean, they have the Lone Druid Bear, too where you can just TP onto the bear the whole time. Remaining. I really hope they weren't banking on that strat because it was well set up here. Five uh, and uh, now it is quite gone. All right, one more ban. Ban the Huskar. Don't let them dazzle Huskar you. They'll do it. All right. That'd be pretty crazy. It's going to be a That'd Nana be Invoker smart. ban out, which is super smart because Nana Invoker is unreal. Was that banned last game? Because it is so good. I don't think it was. It didn't uh, didn't really call for it in the draft, no. Um, but, I mean, Alchemist is... You know, I'd rather have Alka, honestly, in that game. So, worked out well for them, obviously. Uh, but uh, it's pretty cool. There's there's not many teams that are down with this whole idea of taking OD so early and then just throwing it safe lane if required or if they just feel like it. So, you uh, force out some kind of odd bands. Yeah, definitely not sure if it's going to be that safe lane or mid OD. So, Clutcher kind of... Really apprehensive about letting it go either position, and here remaining. they are going to pick up their uh, well, potentially mid laner, potentially Five position one, depending remaining. on where LD's going. And it will be the Shadow Fiend for Armel, one of his favorites. Dia team yeah. Hmm. All right. So I guess not too crazy. Uh, again, Radiant side. So although it's not really fun against OD, Shavi doesn't really lose any matchup. I don't think, honestly, uh, at this point. Uh, I think I was talking to Brax about it, and he he was just like, "No, I don't. I don't think you lose anything." He's basically <laughs> saying like Shavi's in a very good spot right now. Uh, of course, if there's like a Viper or one of those heroes, then you have to do more jungling and stuff. But you're still gonna like come out on top in terms of like your overall stature once the laning phase is ending. So. Good overall drafting from Clutch Gamers. Uh, great team fight just from the axe hopping on in and then followed up by a torrent or a boat. I like You'll it. have Lone Druid and Shadow Fiend pecking away on the sides. I like it a lot. Bizarre, what do you do for your last pick here to deal with that? Hmm. Huskar. <laughs> what was it? Uh, oh, Secret had that one win. Uh, they took the regional finals with the Huskar, which was pretty cool. Uh, definitely not here. We see too often, but they have an axe, so I don't know if you want a Huskar. Um, no, you you want a Huskar. You always want a Huskar. <laughs> for, the, for the one chance that you just cheese him out and win at like 11 minutes. Gotta love a Huskar, Starette. Well, they have the uh, the Denial of the Grave, so I'm feeling good about this Axis game. Yeah, the position one, I think, with the Shadow Fiend being shown here, I can't really think of anyone you'd want to send mid so bad that you would... Like, maybe you could send the Sniper mid, eh, but then his early game's awful. Kunk of Rome's in mid. Yeah, you probably just send OD. So, safe link core. Hey. Oh, they are going to send the sniper. I don't know. That's I feel a like bold this... choice. Yeah. I think it just depends on how well Clutch read the situation, who they're going to invest into the mid lane, because, like you mentioned, if they shut down sniper, Team Bazaar are seriously lacking damage until OD comes online at, like, the 30-minute mark. And then, uh... Really going to be a battle of the supports, because it goes both ways, too. Uh, early on, sniper has the really short range, so... He can't just peep onto Shadow Fiend, and if he tries to get too close for her ass, he just gets uh, raised, obviously. But uh, in the same sense, Shadow Fiend's so weak early, often needs the support to come to lane with him. If they bring a counter support from Team Bazaar, maybe they can slow down the Necromastery Souls and uh, try and keep him pegged down. So uh, the other big thing is, if you're sending a support mid, of course, last game, we saw what they did against Safe Lane OD, right? They tri laned into him, they got control of that lane, and they did get that early lead that they need on Clutch Gamers, just weren't quite able to close it out. So if they think that bringing someone mid to try and deal with their sniper from Team Bazaar is going to make the lane easier for their Safe Lane OD, then maybe this becomes worth it for them. 
Yeah, we will see going in. Again, Team Bazaar have a 1-0 lead over Clutch Gamers now, but we're just in the group stages, just playing the two-game series to determine order in the playoffs. So, yeah, it's uh, it's keeping it interesting here. I like these teams. I think they are uh, two particularly strong teams in the region. Oh, God, let me get you guys out of jail. Whew, don't worry, I got it. Oh, yeah, got to be quick on that now with their... Oh, I got Shadow Fiend Arcana. Thank you, Armel. God Thank bless, you. Honestly. I don't see enough Shadow Fiend Arcanas. I see the, the cool uh, DC <laughs> set sometimes. Is it DC? I don't know. Uh, but... Yes, it's a Dota Sinnoh set, I believe. But uh, I don't see nearly enough uh, really cool Arcanas. That Rubik set. I like it. Oh, yeah, this he's, one's the, the new cool one. He's got a Wisp on his staff. That is definitely the Wisp Arcana, you guys. I'm really looking forward to watch Armel go into the river. I saw a preview of it. They finally added the steam effect to the, the Shadow Fiend Arcana, but <gasps> Did they from what really? I could tell, it looked itty bitty compared to the preview. So. Oh, so when he walks into the river, it like boils around him because he's so hot? Yeah, exactly. So hopefully, right. Armel, on, Armel, just do us all a favor, dude. All right, uh, we're I mean, not missing no anything. There's no reason to go down yet. Might have to wait till he lanes. No, I, I'm watching him. He'll go. He'll show off. If I know Armel. He will definitely go in the river at some point just to show off and watch it bubble. Up top, it looks like we are going to have our OD Nyx combo just scraggling around. Is Nyx going to stay here in the top lane or is he going to rotate down bottom? Uh, I would guess he stays here because uh, the Ben Sand King, this guy is a god tier Sand King. And uh, one of the best things about safe lane OD is, of course, he can actually set up for the Impale. So they have a surprisingly decent lane considering two heroes that aren't typically known for uh, safe laning. Yeah, that's uh, a, a good combo. The problem is if the Nyx ever has to rotate, because someone's going to have to help mid eventually. Uh, OD being on his own is, is really vulnerable. We saw it happen last game, and here we go. Fly solo, moving in. Ben doesn't have anything skilled yet. Doesn't really want to take a Burrow Strike if he doesn't have to, but well, they're just going to Sony for him back. There's the Burrow Strike. They actually have a decent amount of damage with the Fly Solo. They're nipping on him. The Torrent going to be off the mark, and Fly Solo will feed away the first blood. Nana snatches that up. He doesn't even need the Bounty Road anymore. Just feeling victorious, going straight off to lane. Yeah, Bing uh, did snag it up with the bear, so he ends up with two, but uh, worthy trade for Bazaar to get the first blood, especially because it goes on to their mid laner. And uh, just gives him that nice little bit of an edge against Armel. So it will be the 1v1. And uh, this should favor Armel earlier on once the range starts coming out. Uh, it'll be a little bit more obnoxious, but he's obviously going to be able to work the camps uh, a lot better for Nana. So for the most part, I would think both heroes should be getting uh, what they want oh, out of this lane. King. A little bit of trouble here. He's going to borrow strike away, but gets clipped by the torrent. They've got the body blocks they need. They just need damage now. Boombeck slapping away the best they can. Fly solo getting low to the poison touch. One more hit is going to be enough to kill off Ben. He doesn't have enough mana for another burrow strike. So that's going to be now a one and one. Kill score evens out. Meanwhile, mid lane, Armel already feeling a little bit of damage coming off of Nana, but a couple of nice raises bring that back to even. I want to see and, the bubbles. Uh, Get in the river, sir. I'm thoroughly like, disappointed. It's tiny. Do you see how tiny it was? It wasn't even anything, Trent. You got me yeah, way it's, hyped. It's itty bitty. Look at it. Oh, oh. I don't see. It's not. There's, there's nothing. There's like literally a tiny white cloud. See it right at the bottom no, when he moves like back and fart. forth. That's not even. A sm that's I know. Terrible. That is the steam effect, guys. That is. Abs I thought it Praise was gonna be valve. like cauldrony bubbles and oh no. All right. That was way. given a line in the recent change log. <laughs> a whole line, you say. Yep, find it out. But what a uh, balanced patch we have. All right, Raffi having some fun as Axe here, not feeling too much pressure. Nyx and OD. I mean, they can set up for impales and astrals and whatnot, but Axe is still pretty survivable in the early game. Yeah, it I should be uh, relatively person? okay. I don't know. Here we go. Give him the stu- Oh no! Look at that. Yeah. Just a fake goat. Axe right. just like you know what? You're you're a little annoying. I can't handle this right now. <laughs> Axe is going to be dipping away. I mean, good thing about this is Nyx Assassin can pretty easily just go stack and jungle up camps. So he's, he's going to keep himself useful, hopefully keep his XP up there, because he wanted Vendetta as early as possible. I think Rappi's kind of surprised how well this is going. Honestly, he started with an Iron Talon. Yeah, he was ready to bail out at a moment's notice, but hasn't had much trouble now. I guess uh, if they committed any Vex Nova's time up there, it would have been worse, so... Mid lane uh, continues to be relatively even. Last bit of experience starts making its way over the Shadow Fiend and 
We now have a, uh, a slight lead, though, 14-7. I guess, uh, understandable, uh, again, our mill did not get any assistance, and there goes the salve, so that's disappointing. Aww. Boombox going to have to YOLO with the torrent here. He's thinking about it. I mean, he's got the X, so he can go for a little bit of a safer play, but that level 1 X has to be a little range. Really. Yeah, that was really greedy to not try the fog torrent. Because, like, Sniper has boots. There's, like, no way that works. Yep, Nana having some uh, some fun times there, not feeling the pressure. Even with Kanka there, still able to just continue farming up nicely. And, well, down bottom, things going pretty well for our dire squad as well. Ben just going to burrow strike up the bear. It will be brought back to safety, but... I mean, this duo lane is not feeling too scary. For a Sand King Dazzle, they are holding very well. Yeah, Dazzle very obnoxious in these uh, dual lane scenarios. And uh, Sand King, of course, someone that can just always capitalize thanks to Caustic now up to level 2. And uh, even as a ranged hero, you got to be a little bit careful. You don't want those creeps just uh, crowding around you and exploding and suddenly you die. Top lane, our food is going to be held in place while Kunkka snaps up the room. Cute little play there. Nothing too spicy going on. You just got Ah Bing chilling under tower. His bear poofed back to life. And yeah, I mean, the, where do you think the real blood's going to start pouring? Where's the heat going to go down? Is it going to be rotations to mid lane? Is it going to be this dual lane bottom that finally snaps? Uh, hmm. Ben's probably just going to live down here the whole time. So he'll be holding the tower and keeping that. Maybe a smoke from Fly Solo and Kunkka. Probably going to be the two biggest deciders, I would guess. They seem to be ones to, to set the pace. Of course, Enix Assassin being in the support role means that his level 6 isn't nearly as impactful. Oh. Axe doesn't really rotate till Blink, so... Ben getting low along with Fly Solo. There's going to be a TP back down, but no one Got cancelled by Afu. Caught Boombox TPing up here, and he looks like he's going to die for it. Oh, one more. One more. They got the shrapnel. There we go. The sniper Shockingly close. Kill. Yeah. Oh, uh, 500 gold lead here for our sniper in the mid. Oh, bottom lane. Look at that bear. Just did like 60% of its <laughs> HP with a single combo. And I get another poison touch on it. That poor little bear. The bear's going to TP out. Goodbye. Meanwhile, mid lane, they've got eyes on Afu here. Can they actually get on top of him? They're going in for YOLO Torrent. He's going to be able to dodge that one away. They are just barely getting in range for the X now. They've got the lift on the Rubik when they need it, along with the Fade Bolt. But Nyx, he's a, a pretty chunky dude. He's going to take some serious effort to get down. And there we go. Rubik actually going to hit the deck. Nana comes in and just starts raking in kills. Rappy is so gosh darn low. But a oh, Torrent nice will torrent. hold the Sniper back. Wow. Nicely done. I think, uh, I can say the same movement speed anyway, but he might have caught up. Sorry to tell, but oh, now it's Nana. Nana is in a whole heap of trouble here. He's got 700 gold. Can he even buy out? He eats a fairy fire. He's able to dodge the torrent, but goes down anyway. That's a pretty unfortunate play from him, unable to buy out before he went down. Well, his first rotation mid didn't work out too well for Moonbox, but ever since then, uh, he's really been nailing these torrents and uh, getting quite a few X's off here, so... Helping out the team and advancing some of his other cores, namely just oh, I like this initiation here onto the lone druid. They got him. All it takes is poison touch and a little bit of hold in place from the burrow strike, and he is donezo. Yeah, and this is uh, with no pressure top lane on this OD. This is just so much different than last game. If they don't have the aggro tri heroes to come up and pressure you, your life is so much better. Yeah, they'll send the OD up here now, or rather the uh, the LD up here now. LD versus OD, but this used to be someone who was considered a, a decent counter to OD in the mid lane. He would just try and match up this uh, lone druid against the OD, because you can only ask for one of your targets yeah, and hit Sand him with the King other one. Sand King is a crazy man. They're going forward. Axe, he's got his call. This may be a little bit much for the Dire to deal with right now. Ben in some trouble. He's going to be pulled back into the torrent, lifted up into the air. That's pretty much all he's got. He burrow strikes, but will not make it out alive. Again, just a little bit of ambition there, diving behind the, the tier one at seven minutes in with a Sun King. Yeah, maybe, I'm not sure, maybe not expecting Rafi to be the one who makes the full rotation back down here or something like that, but uh, cutting waves, certainly understandable. They want to just try and deny the creeps altogether, start for, uh, forcing down the tower. And if they can just get their waves running into Rafi, like, yes, he's going to spin on them, but they can just lower him down and then just go for a single burrow strike kill, much like that almost was. There was an attempt 
There yep. was a, a prime <laughs> attempt. Now he's going to be lifted up. All they got is X Nova. He does have his grave, but it's pretty difficult to keep on top of the Sun King. They're going to heal him up. Now there's no mana for a grave, so Ben could actually be in some serious trouble. They can trade for Rappi. X Nova will find that kill. Ben's still alive. This is going very well for the Dyer so far. And they do end up finding the pick on that fly solo. He was trying to TP out, but they brought in the Nyx with the Impale to cancel the TP. And look at X Nova holding that. Uh Shadow, even though he could have got the kill steal with the three man heal. I How mean, nice of him. That's a, that's a kill secured. Now they're going to rotate back for this Kanka. They bring Nana all the way down here, knowing that there's no one that can help them out. So they're ready to go. They're just going to be plucking away at this tower. Shrapnel pop down, and. Yep. Two points and take game. We'll keep you out of tower range. There you go. It's a really early uh, sniper rotation for sure, but uh, if it's curious in this tower, probably worth it. As X Nova goes mid to try and hold on to this as much as possible. Yep, they're going to be going right back in as Boombax just wanted okay. to defend this, but that is a ambitious play. Will cost him his life. Up in the top lane, Ajit going to be left to his own devices here. Cornered in, he's going to be going for the TP out, and they don't have anything to cancel that, so... He's just flying out of there. It's going to be a tier one for tier one trade. Dyer taking it a little bit quicker as they've just got more bodies playing around. We'll see if they're going to go defend this. They're just... Yeah, they have TPs. They should go. There they go. Sand King moves forward. They've still got to call on the axe if they want. They're going to be taunting up that Sand King. Great play. And Ah Bing, is he going to be just booking it out of there? It looks like it. And now this puts them in a little bit of a tough spot, though, because with Nana up here, I uh, don't think you can pressure into this. The OD can just start heading in towards that mid lane, even. Level 7 on him. Armel, level 9, though, a little scary. Just slow. Will he pay for this? Ooh, Armel is in some serious trouble. Grave off X Nova will be fine. And there's a nice weave coming in. They get the impale as well. Sniper is going to be assassinating from downtown. They get him. And there is going to be the savage roar from Ah Bing. X marks the spot, going to be holding Nana in place as Kanka just tries to slip on by, and he'll make it across the river. Hastrune going to be picked up. And, I mean, X Nova is so deliciously low, but there's no one on Radiant that can just feel safe walking into these heroes right now. Nope, not an easy grab up there, so... A arcane time. boots on the ground, not even the backpack. This dazzles confident. I saw Slacks drop his boots in Shrine yesterday while he was streaming. And I was just like, wow. That's how you know Slax really wants to win a game. If Slax is dropping items on the ground, <laughs> I, I actually couldn't even believe it. I thought he was a firm disbeliever in the Wagamagaga strats. But I, I backpack him. I don't care about that six-second cooldown. I just don't want to lose my boots. Yeah, if there's a single like blinker invis, I'm a backpack or two. I agree with you. Down with the backpack. Safety first, Danny. It's absolutely Trent. You cannot take risks like that. Now, no. this poor bear, someone called PETA, he's just being given the run around there, spending a lot of effort dealing with this bear right now as there is a big chunk of free farm going on to our Rubik bottom. He's finally getting some space for himself. And, oh, is this bear all tactical, trying to draw him in, trying to bring him across the river, then you punish him? Looks like it's just going to be uh, just gonna be some, some setup, some farming, but... Sand King, he's getting good levels. He's almost at a blink dagger at 11 minutes in, already level 7 on him. So we talked about Ben's god tier Sand King play. He's been quiet, but look at this guy. He is yeah. right there online. Definitely one of the uh, more notable Sand King players I can think of, honestly. The, they, they would often first pick this hero for him for a long while, too. And now it seems they can get away with grabbing it a little bit later for him without it being banned out. But... Uh, was there a so Centaur ban, so or was Centaur just passed up here? I think and he was passed up because he didn't quite make sense, I want to say. Um, let me just double check that. I might be crazy. Yeah, it's definitely a rarity if Centaur was just completely untouched in favor of other offlaners. Now they've got this ward here, so these two guys are in vision, just allowing for some push power going down. OD picking up more and more farm. It looks like he's building into a fast Hurricane Pike after a Veil. Absolutely nothing surprising there. Just very typical OD things. But the timing is great. I mean, at 12 minutes in, he's already making some serious progress towards that Dragonlance. Alright, Armel sitting back. He's got his Dragonlance completed. It looks like we are going for a first item. Uh, Shadow Blade, Shadow Fiend. No surprises there. I want someone to pick up something super unusual. All right, we're, we're not crazy. It was banned the first phase. Okay, for okay. some reason, I, did, I didn't envision it for some reason in my brain, but he, he was, in fact, taken out. I mean, not too shocking, obviously. Centaur still the man, uh, even though he got a couple nerf tweaks there, so. 
Team Bazaar, shall they be taking a second game here? Axe is asking for death in the mid lane. Goodbye, sir. Did buy his blink first, but uh, he clearly lost the race. <laughs> Does die to Ben. That was just, uh, seemed to me to be a, a little bit of. Oh, Afu gonna find Fly solo. Sentry down. Nice He's able save, to get nice off save. the list. Is there gonna oh, be. Oh, no! The stolen uh, vendetta, and they just don't have dust because it's not something that they consider that would be an he issue. He almost hit the god tier play. He almost lifted him high ground. That would have been so good. Yeah, either way, stolen vendetta can still get something done. There's going to be an X. Ajit looks like the target they're going on to. He's going to astral himself as to not get picked back in, but now Ben moves forward. Gotta not lie, oh, that epicenter was a little bit disappointing. Now Ben's in some trouble leading everyone across the river. X Nova taking a couple slaps as well. The Sand King goes down. Everyone else in the dire just going to be wrapping towards the bottom lane, potentially to tap on this bottom tower, but mid lane, they lose the Dazzle as well. Radiant team have a really nice fight there, getting two for nothing. Yeah, worth noting that is a different interaction, so I see people get confused on that sometimes, and understandably so, but if you get glimpsed in your astral, you always end up where you were supposed to be glimpsed. Think of it like Pudge Hook, uh, but does not apply to the x marks as well. The only thing it stops glimpses, uh, magic community, but... Either way, uh, did not quite work out for them. You know, they save themselves from that initiation, but it still ends up being like a setup onto yourself because obviously they know you're just going to come down where the astral is, and they he was still in pretty dangerous territory, so difficult to disengage, and they don't really have that big damage pumping out yet from the sniper. And uh, oh well, you know, he just said it too, and I had looked, and he did have the shadow lake queued up, and now he actually just swapped over. He's looking at S and Y. We'll see if he ends up just going like Yasha or something like that. But who fiend? Nana. Or were you? Oh, you're talking I about Armel, yeah. Oh, well, he actually had it queued up on the sniper too. So there oh, you go. Oh, okay. But he has also just switched over. Oh, Armel, <laughs> buddy. Thank you, Armel. Thank you for uh, for drawing the focus there as you just get completely destroyed. Now that death rock we have did a lot. Look at that boat on top of a phenomenal torrent. The rum is splashing around Ben, just trying to get out with his life here. They've got the X onto the Nyx Assassin. He may just take one for the team here as he's out of mana. He's out of health, but look at the jukes. The blink away. They got the reinitiation here. It does still cost Nyx his life. Now San King, he's going in. He wants the shrine, but oh no. Rappy with the read there, able to really easily identify that he's low, he's going for Shrine, and capitalize on that. Alright, well, that was a pretty nice boat. I gotta say, Boombox, looking pretty good. Not just a Crystal Maiden player, it turns out. Pretty good at the Kunkka. Credit where credit is due. Uh, he's ambitiously looking in towards a like, full of Guardian Greaves at this point. Guy uh, has some plans in terms of his uh, itemization, but... They are going to give up on that push bottom, judging by the fact they've rotated with some of their heroes. Aww. Hopefully they don't lose too many, though. A Bing had to kill his own bear because Sniper was going to assassinate it. Well, now the new one summoned up. Impale off the mark, so Afu continues to press forward. They bring Nana in. They'd like to keep eyes on this bear, but he's just going to be TPing out. Man, Lone Druid is just all about keeping this boy safe, but Savage Roar can only do so much. He's still getting nipped on. They've got Vision from the Shrapnel, and well, there we go. That's a clean 300 for Nana. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Nah, big. Well, they have uh, fully brought it back in terms of net worth, though. They're splitting up the map a lot right now. Shadowfiend and Axe are getting a ton of neutral farm, uh, as well as lanes, just uh, while they're kind of grouping up a little bit on Bazaar, which is what you sort of expect with OD. And uh, almost into the uh, Hurricane Pike here, I think, for Staff Recipe. Yes, it is on the Courier. Hmm. Feeling pretty good about CG this game. I feel like they can, uh, this one going. The Lone Druid just needs to not die, but so far, so good. Lying in towards a Maelstrom here. And he does have the level 4 Rabbids, so this was the uh, the biggest nerf, I would say, overall to uh, all the nerfs that Lone Druid's been getting over the past uh, couple patches and tweaks and whatnot, but now your Rabbit is no longer essentially toggleable. Um, before, it used to be 30 second uptime and 30 second cooldown, but we're up to a 45 second duration, which is really painful. Um, it basically, he now feels a little bit more like Alchemist, kind of, where you're, like, you're, you have to play around your ultimate cooldown a lot, where you're just having the chemical rage, and uh, Rabbit's going to be a lot the same. Kind of scary. Not sure how I feel about it, honestly. Seemed it, it was a, definitely a hefty nerf to all lone druids. It doesn't just affect this uh, crazy sniper druid. Yeah, definitely something that you got to take into consideration. Maybe a little less lone druid being picked up in the pro scene, but 
eh, he's usually a, a player of long games anyway. He's gonna miss the the 90 minute Druid farm fests. Well, either way, he's, yeah, we'll he's shaping up quickly here. This little bear just bounding along, dude. I love that run animation of the bear. He's just he's just leaping. I liked it when it was that little tiny level one bear and it's like bounding. Dude, I remember that. That was a, like a three in the morning game, and you pointed it out, and I just got the giggles for like 15 minutes. Yeah, that was a, a very weird bear set. I have to say, the, the level one bear was actually like way smaller than the other one. I think that's it was like a raccoon, dude. It was scouted. straight up raccoon. Oh, something just happened there. Something was just. There were a lot of pings. I mean, they but, have this uh, guy, but that did not scout out the smoke. Hmm, either way. Rappy, he's getting in position. He wants to go in for a jump. Look, I mean, this is just like, where are they? Like, why are there creeps just hitting this tower? If you're dire and there's no one pushing mid, no one's bottom, they must be up to something. Okay, now they see Rubik dewarding. Down bottom, Armel just getting ready to unload onto Nana there. And, well, that's, uh, goodbye. Nice TP out, very, very sneaky play. Our Mel can afford to do that every, you know, two or three minutes as his Requiem comes up and he's full souls. It's just an easy way to blast down the Sniper without him getting keen on it, especially if Sniper's farming alone. And he's still working on his Silver Edge here. A Silver Edge Sniper before even a finished off, uh, well, anything. How do you feel about okay. that? Uh, a little bit of split push around the map, I think. Just trying to get into the right spot every time for the fight as well. The, uh, the Radiant side seems to be bringing engagements very shortly, so uh, I think he's just a little bit worried. Like, you already have Blink Blade Mail on Raffi. He's doing a great job farming on the sides of the map. He's only, like, 100 gold back. Not even. He's, like, 30 gold back at his Lone Druid right now. He looks great. And he's going to have a Shadow Blade of his own, which is uh, the best counter split push item for an Axe right after Blink. So. Oh, they got Sand King in the vicinity. They know what's going on. The Roshan goes down. The H is already picked up by Armel. And Dyer just aren't in time to get on that. Radiant structures are fortified. I, well, I was teased when the Sand King got near the pit. I'm like, oh, they're going for a steal. Radiant they know what's up. But yeah, it just got outdone. Yeah, just a little bit of outmaneuvering. Uh, helped out with that vision that they did deboard uh, as they got some observers and sentries taken away from the dire side. Hey, Trent, I'm not even a proponent of Arcanas, but that Shadow Fiend in the river thing is just nonsense. It's a tiny steam bubble. Come on. I mean, Crystal Maiden's Arcana leaves her floating two feet in the air and shit in snow. Like, that is some serious change. Shadow That's Fiend true. just, like, kind of bubbles. Rappy just missed a, a double call up top. It, it was a greedy one, but... I got it. I got it. Here. There yeah. we go. Nick's Assassin going to be destroyed. That looked really weird. That looked very painful. Now, Armel, he's back doing his things. He's got his full souls. He's got his Requiem, but has to be pretty careful about which fights to take here. Just slithering back to his side of the map. He's going to be saving up, finishing off his Silver Edge. Oh, yeah. Almost done here. This is a walk himself over to the uh, side shop. He needs a hundred gold. Go. gold. I like mean, you <laughs> kill some creeps on the way. Piece yeah. of cake. Here we go. Some, some good push in. Lone Druid hopping into the, the man form. Ooh, this is a good find. Play. Man at bottom. Middle he is playing with death there. He's going to Shadow Blade, and, well, there's All right. no detection. Radiant's that was on Fly Solo. He, he wanted the Vendetta damage, not just a lift. But uh, it still would have been pretty close, honestly, so. A little bit of a, a tough ask. He'll just try and keep playing the Vendetta and see if he can catch Sniper. In fact, it might actually work out now. Don't leave, Fly Solo. Don't leave. Stay Don't in leave. it, buddy. Well, looks like Nana's gonna be the one just booking it out of there. I have never seen a sniper play so much like a tinker. <laughs> yes, excellently cheeky there. Well done by snipers. It's kind of stuff they need. Uh, is it, it is slowly crawling to CG's favor. Armel is gonna grab himself a tier one. Certainly want to get a little bit a bit aggressive here. Uh, only about what one, two, two and a half minutes left on this Aegis here. So uh, playing as a group. 
trying not to be susceptible to Nyx from these three. Kind of same thing with the Rubik being at least close to the Shadow Fiend here. And uh, there's our Shadow Blade now done up here for Rappy. So plenty of invis in this game. Uh, some of the most that you're honestly ever going to see in a competitive match, but no one uh, buying the detection. <laughs> one day we'll get a gem. Just you wait, Trent. We're going to have a, a little tower for tower change here. And yeah, Shrapnel comes in. They're going to assassinate down Armel, but... I don't think he's too scared. He's just going to go no. snap up the tower and walk away completely unscathed. Top lane, there will be a trade. They're going to get this tier one, but obviously a little Radiant bit less stop. overwhelming. I think, uh, I think Radiant can still deal with that. Yeah, we do have a lot of dust out here now, actually. Uh, Ben's rocking some. I think we got some. Someone else had some on the dire, too. Uh, the Nyx Assassin does too, so at least they're ready for this. Maybe they can catch Armel trying to smoke up as the Aegis is ending. Still a little bit of a ways to go though. I uh, would love to see them just pressure down mid lane too. Rappy maybe in trouble from Ben here. Nah no, dude, Rappy's, Rappy's the one on the offensive. He's bringing in the rest of his team. They're gonna rotate in, everyone TPing to Shrine. Axe is gonna be Yule up into the air and now Armel's here. He's got his full souls Requiem ready to go. And they are able to isolate down this Nyx Assassin, so easy pickings. Axe is going to be getting out just fine. Ex Nova going to be TPing out. Axe actually reinitiating here onto the Sand King is going to be going and trying to TP out. They got the raises. They have anything to cancel. Well, unfortunately, he will be escaping. But still, nice quick trade there for Clutch Gamers. Puts them in a good position, and they can just rotate right in on this OD as well. All right. Well, uh, I guess say I was a little concerned. I thought maybe they'd get some sort of an epi play, but uh, Rabbi is also level 15, so... At this point, 1850 HP, and uh, again, he has his Shadow Blade, so he's going to be on the hunt for Nana. Does not have any detection, so going to require some assistance, or, well, oh. just harass. Oh, <laughs> did you see that play from Fly Solo? He puts uh, down a ward. Not. Dazzle goes in to de-ward it because it was under Dire Sentries, and Fly Solo from the low ground. Not only does he deny the ward, he also goes ahead and steals Weave. Oh yeah, not too bad. That is a, a nice little initiating spell there if they want to get their armor up and just go in and Start charging. Afu was having a little bit of a rough time keeping up. Had this Midas for a while, but I think maybe he's been purchasing some of the wards or something, but uh, he's, he's not quite getting up towards that Blink Dagger or the, even, even the potential Aghanim Scepter, honestly. Uh, I think it's okay to go for it first on the support. The other problem is, the problem with the eggs is it's like useless anywhere here inside this circle. You know, if you're fighting Roche, it's great. If you're fighting on high ground or even attacking high ground, it's great. But other than that, Aghanim Scepter is so underwhelming on this hero. Well, Feels so useless outside of like determined areas of battle. Here we go, scan. They know that Radiant are here. There's gonna be the stolen weave from Fly Solo put down. And there's a call in. They clip onto the Dazzle. And well, I don't think he has much of a chance here. There is gonna be a shallow grave. And Axe, he can't cut through it. Dazzle saved his own life. X Nova makes it up to the high ground. The Radiant, they're getting ready to unleash our Mel drops. The full souls Requiem Ben still barely alive. Will end up falling. Meanwhile, Nana just gonna be picking up some bounty runes, making his way into the fight. Afu waiting on the wings as well. They should be able to at least uh, make a play of this. They're all sitting up together. They're all getting healed. I cannot believe the Dazzle got out of that. Yeah, ends up just being a uh, offlaner for offlaner oh. scenario here. Yeah, they're going in. They're dropping the full boat here. There's going to be Rubik stealing up the Impale. Gets a double man Impale. Meanwhile, OD just trying to go to town. Drops the Sanities. Is going to go ahead and astral himself to prevent that X into Torrent. But uh, not as bloody of a fight as I was expecting. It seemed like everyone just had their engines revving and didn't actually get off their spells. Yeah, basically just throwing around a bunch of spells, but no one getting finished off here. And that puts us now one minute away from our Aegis. If the Radiant get this, be like Bizarre are in big trouble. Pressure in with Lone Druid or Shadow Fiend, either one making a fine siege engine. They can close out the last of the outer objectives in the mid tier two. And uh, from there, just start putting even more aggressive vision down. They have one great ward that has survived an extremely long time right in front of the tier three in the mid lane. Plenty of information. One of the best things about these deep wards that I feel is very underrated is courier movements. Like, if you, if you spot a courier going down this area or something like that, and, you know, you see it's been coming in your jungle or out of your jungle, uh, it can be very good. And you can just check it to see if it was only a secret shop or something like that. But uh, generally, it can give away positions, so... Very solid stuff by them so far. 
Radiant making their move on the mid lane tower. Dyer going for the bot, and it should just be a clean trade. I mean, obviously, Radiant have a couple more resources at their ability now. Boomback's moving forward. I don't think he's going to appreciate that TP. In fact, Sniper's actually going to back off. There's going to be more rotations in. It's just going to be Nyx versus the world, as everyone else in the Dyer should be backing off. Dazzle still stuck in place, but I don't think Afu can get out of this one. Oh. Club down. Dazzle's still sitting in the trees. Has himself a TP, but he's uh, playing a little risky there. Rappy not able to call in time. All right. Calculated. We, mm, we just the bear in terms of scouting Roche, but at that time, Mystic Staff. I hand over to Ajit. So starts working towards a Shiva's Guide. Right call this game. Shadow Fiend, Lone Druid. Makes sense. Darmel. This is BKB. Moving towards the Hurricane Pike. Can't really disagree with that. Uh, everything's pretty standard, honestly, in terms of uh, our overall item builds. Boombox stopping off of his uh, Guardian Greaves potential and just going for the Ghost Scepter instead. Against Sniper and OD. Good choice here. Seems to be some pretty basic Dota, Annie. Yep, everyone just farming up, looking for their next item. We haven't seen a whole lot of 5-on-5 five -five clashes. I mean, with heroes like a, a Kunkka, you got heroes like an OD, you kind of expect there to be a little bit more five-man group up and head-on slash, but it seems mm. like they're more just pretty content to go push out a lane when anyone comes in and peeks their head out. You just TP out, play safe. <laughs> or run away in our numerous Shadow Blades. Yes. Uh, probably the biggest culprit as to why this game's been uh, a little bit lax in terms How of the action. We have? we have a Shadow Blade on Rappi, Silver Edge onto Armel, and Sniper. So that's, that's only three. That's not good. That, that's pretty high for a Shadow Blade. So, and if we're including I mean, blinks in that, that is also one, two, three, four, four more blinks at the moment. Potentially more. The Nyx Assassin basically has a Shadow Blade. I mean, that counts. He is a Shadow Blade. And Rubik does steal Vendetta a fair amount, so that's right. also so that a Shadow counts. Blade. Yeah. yeah. All right, he's gay. Uh, they will smoke up. Not scouted, but they saw them literally walk up, so I think they know they just smoked. Yeah, they saw it from, from this ward. Radiant's bottom tower. There is at least uh, some information going on. Radiant, they're going to go ahead and scan mid lane to see if anyone's poking around there, but it will not clip on X Nova. Although he's uh, waiting around a little bit. This could be dangerous. Dire, they're going to take this opportunity just to go in and slap some damage onto this tower, and they Radiant's should be able to take it out pretty easily. Yeah, they're basically saying Radiant's we can't fight you at Roche. Tower. That's what that move said. Uh, we don't think we are going to win that fight, so we're not even going to try. Which puts them at a pretty big disadvantage. But I think they thought that they were way too close. If they had have smoked immediately into Roche, there was no way they could have got there in time. So they just wanted to get something out of this. But had they actually went for Roche, they of course could have got there in time. We know because they did a big shit loop around and everything like that. <laughs> Well, it goes here. There's going to be that 5-on-5 five five engage we were talking about. Oh Very nice play. They're blowing up everyone. Aegis immediately popped out. Oh, my goodness. Shadowfiend is coming back in. He's got his BKB rolling. Ben getting low will get put down. OD trying to save whoever he can here. There's going to be a dust popped out. It's just making sure they can keep eyes on Armel. The Hurricane Pike, though. Somehow, Afu's still alive. They want to get this kill onto Armel. Nana... Got the assassinate, but they want to keep some vision. There they go. They get the break strike with the silver edge. Is this going to be enough? Oh, Nelly, what an amazing fight there from Bazaar. Oh, man. That was a little bit scary. I wasn't sure if he's going to quite get it there, but the, uh, what is that? Uh, so, how did all 650 live there? damage. Pretty good. Uh, not too bad, so. Damn, Radiant's the, uh, the blink stun, I mean, they did not see that coming at all Radiant's in terms of the uh, movement from the dire side. Boombox is just, like, standing here TPing. And uh, they catch out three heroes, I think, with that impale, uh, including a Shadow Fiend who had the Aegis and didn't, like, although you usually want BKB after Aegis, that was kind of one of those situations where if you got your BKB off, you might be able to save that whole engagement. Oh, man, right, Boombox is going to be in some serious trouble. The Assassinate not even needed to finish him off. Savage Ford just trying to temporarily keep back the dire, but... They are knocking on this tier 3's door, and there is nothing that Avvin can do about it right now on his lonesome. Oh, this is so tempting to stay for this tier 3. They want to, and there's going to be the TP in from Axe. Can they actually get it done in time? He's going to go use use that Shadow Blade. Oh, no. 
Is this... Is this you or me? Hello? Hello? Hello. Hi, I'm reconnecting now. I will I will okay. try to get back online. Oh no. All right. I think we are going through. I'm just trying to make sure we're not Yeah, I hear you in Dota TV again. All right. All right. We are in. So again, I'm trying to make sure OBS is still going and didn't just completely yes. short out. Uh so sorry about that. The internet at the Moon Duck House just crashed. So I was screaming my head off in the team fight, and then all of a sudden, everyone stopped moving, and I got very frightened. So Well, uh, so basically, uh, I mean, I guess you saw probably most of it before you crashed, but uh, they got wiped again. They left the base, uh, and everyone on Clutch Gamers died once more. So pretty hefty advantage currently for the side of Bazaar. Uh, they got the full racks mid, and then they, of course, took the tier 3, too. All right, so... Uh, so not GG yet, but how are we looking in terms of, uh... I thought it was going to be over, honestly, but they were diving the base a bit, and a couple of them died, so they, uh, they threw back some gold, and if you actually look, in terms of the net worth graph, it's a 7,500 lead for the Dyer, but, uh... I don't know. When you, when you actually consider the actual net worth stacking up, like, yes, there's OD, and there's Sniper, but then Lone Druid, Shadow Fiend, Axe, I would still feel like this Tricor is still pretty strong, so... Game not totally over. Good advantage for the dire side with this constantly pressuring in mid, though. All right, so TP back in. Sorry, I'm a little out of the groove of things after yes. <laughs> manically trying to that reset to the router. Expected. I just I couldn't figure out if it was on me or you, so I'm just like screaming at the team speak, like Trent, Trent, come back. Yeah. Oh, they're they're having a pause. Maybe they're they're dealing with the same issues. So. Big smoke up now from Bazaar. I mean, are they looking just to go in and finish this thing off? Do they have the momentum to do that right now? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, uh, buybacks, let's see, Radiant Side, they are missing everyone but Kunkka. So, and they're all pretty far away. Uh, any of these pickoffs could result in the game, especially if it's LD, Axe, or SF. 
Uh, that sh that should just be it. Um, very difficult to defend high ground. Maybe if they lose the axe, Kunkka can pick up the slack, but it won't be easy. And do they have any... Hmm. Can they turn this game around themselves? If they blow up the sniper or the OD right away, I would say yes, but even if he just gets off like the Shiva's guard and stuff, it's going to slow down so much of the damage from the Shadow Fiend and the Lone Druid. Sorry, just talking about tech stuff. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think this is going to be getting very, very tense. Our Lone Druid, like you mentioned, he's got his Scotty. He's got his big boy items ready to go. His bear finally picks up a Blightstone, maybe helping carve out those structures a little bit. It's 300 gold, but really makes a big difference when you're trying to siege high ground a as quickly as possible. So, here we go. We're resuming the game, getting back on track. Everyone trying to finish off their potentially last big item of the game. It's dire. They're charging down mid. They just want to go. They want to find something. And Afu leading the charge. We'll see if his smoke's going to break. Oh, this is good. Just a great pass that. The dream. There we go. They're initiating the fight. They go in. Immediate assassinate. They're holding on to the side of these eclipse. They drop it now. Rappy, he's BKB. He's invis. He's still alive. And there is going to be Armel letting go of that Requiem, mostly connecting onto the OD, but Ajit going to walk himself back in time. No one falls after the expulsion of all of these ultimates. Now Rubik, with the stolen sanities, doesn't do a whole lot. In fact, that's going to cost him his life. There's going to be the X-Torrent back in, connecting on Nick's Assassin, and oh man, oh, wow, aggressive play there from Rappy, but it's actually going to cost him a lot. Nana getting low, trying to chip away at him with the Blade Nail, but they've got the Assassinate, they will get the kill. Two heroes dead on Clutch Gamers without buyback right now. This is a really great spot for Bazaar. They just got to be able to find the structures off of this. Yeah, I think they uh, made the right call, though. Um, from Radiant, you have to make a play there. They all shrined up, and they tried to find something. But if you just go back into your base, uh, you know, you're, you're going to lose this game more than likely. So you try and make a play while you know most of their spells are down on the dire side. Just uh, not able to quite find it. And that was with Ajit holding that site the whole time, too. Oh, here we go. They're moving forward. They got the Hex onto Aving. Can they get him down? This would be huge. He goes out. He's got no buyback. It looks like Bazaar are moments away from closing out this series. They picked up their momentum, and they did not want to let it go. So they're going to be focusing down. The GG calls out. Bazaar able to take a 2-0 series here in our first game of C Kappa Season 4. Well, I gotta say, I felt like uh, we were gonna bring this one on back. Uh, the lead was up to like 7k, they had a pretty good lineup for it too. The axe was really farmed, like super early blink blade mail, right into the shadow blade. Felt like he had a very strong game going for himself, but unable to close it out. Uh, even if you're down, if you manage to kill them like 12 times in a row and only lose one hero, then you're probably gonna end up winning the game. And that's Dota 2, so very well played to Bazaar. They uh, certainly outperformed in the team fights, and uh, this was a really neat draft. The way they start with the Nyx OD, and uh, you could see the power of this like blink burrow strike right into two man impale every time. They uh, they had kind of had two, three like three and a half right where you have this uh, very firm Nyx assassin and Sanking both level twenty one near the end of the game. So good teamwork by Afu and Ben. Absolutely, I mean just really great synergy all around. Team Bizarre looking like they are just, uh, you know really getting comfortable with each other these guys are the rebranded wg unity if you know them better under that title but i mean they're they're just kicking ass right now in the sea region so clutch gamers not looking too shabby themselves but i feel like this is probably the third or fourth time i've seen a head-to-head -head between clutch gamers and bizarre and bizarre just seems to come out on top but we'll see again we are in the group stages of c kappa so we've got a ton more games coming at you in the next couple of days tomorrow i think we have three best of threes starting at i believe 1700 sgt which is if i three am correct 4 a.m at uh no no earlier 3 a.m oh there. three oh yeah we have three two game series tomorrow you are correct yeah three best of twos wow so that's our, a lot, Amy. <laughs> it is a lot. That is a lot of Dota. That is six games of SEA action. C Kappa coming at you hot. You can't get away from this. So if you are interested in following the action there, just drop a follow on the Moonduck Twitch and we'll be live every single day, bringing you the best coverage we can. So again, uh, we also, I will say, there's another series on Moonduck tomorrow, uh, which will be that third place decider uh, from the Overpower Cup, which is Cloud9 and NIP. So we have Southeast Asia oh, wow. and EU coming tomorrow. That is going to be a hot day of Dota, so keep it locked on the Moonduck channel. But 
Uh, for now, thank you guys so much for putting up with all our technical blunders. Apologies for the internet going out, but we, we tried the best we could. So uh, again, stick around more C Kappa tomorrow and the following days. Overpower coming at you tomorrow. I'm Android. That's Trent. Any final words, sir? No, thank you uh, for producing. Sorry about the, the tech issues. It's your fault, Nothing Trent. really in your hands. I know yeah, you're DDoSing our internet. Yeah, just slowly burning away the Moonduck household, eventually <laughs> moving it to Canada one step at a time. <laughs> the Nova Scotia Moonduck house. Let's do it. Got him. All right. But uh, no, thank you, everyone, for joining, and we will see you again tomorrow.